Hi, and welcome to On the Edge with Deneen Dias. Today, I get to talk with Dave Emmerman from Zero. Dave, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, my name is David Emmerman. I am uh, head of enterprise here in the U.S. for Zero. I actually was uh, was in practice for almost 20 years. Ran a practice up here in the New York area, um, and after that, spent a bunch of time working closely with Zero. Um, in various capacities, and then eventually decided that it was uh, this would be the next step for me. Uh, well, can you share a little bit more? I mean, I recently learned that you were a Zero ambassador, so I'd love for you to kind of talk through one what that means, but then two, when you were practicing, you know how you were using technology to transform your practice. Yeah, yeah. So. Being in a zero ambassador was really exciting. I spent almost three years doing that. Um, and really what it is is that the zero looks for for users that were either early adopters or that used zero pretty heavily in their practice. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be one of those. I also sat on zero's uh, partner advisory committee before before becoming an ambassador. And Really, um, ambassadors are there as as folks that were early adopters that have kind of brought technology into their practice and really leverage technology every day, and that love to speak about it, right? Because some of the most powerful stories that you hear from people that are actually using um, different products that in practice day in day out, um, and I was one of those folks, right? So I spent um, it was like seven or eight years where I was actually using Zero day to day in practice with clients before um, before I ended up becoming an actual employee. Um, so I did a lot of speaking and you know traveled around a lot, worked with a lot of um, accounting firms working on like what their cloud strategies really look like and what does it take to kind of move to the cloud. Um, and I think that's really that's where my passion for working with accountants came from. And then mm -hmm. uh, then Zero kind of gave me a platform to be able to do that. Well, I can say that, you know, through the years, I've always heard that one of the special things about Xero um, is how you truly, you know, you partner with firms. I mean, yes, you are amazing software with wonderful features, but you truly are, you know, like you said, you know, you talk to the partners, you understand their goals, you put plans in place to help them achieve their goals. And personally, now that we've put a partnership in place um, with Botkeeper and Zero, I've had the great opportunity to experience that. Uh, and you really, it does feel unique or special being a partner of Zero. So um, I'd love for you to kind of speak to that a little bit more because I'm feeling it. <laughs> um, and I just love for you to share your perspective and how you're guiding your, um, you know, your people to really partner, be a true partner with the firms. Yeah, so our um, the the philosophy that Zero's always kind of operated under was how do how do how do accountants work really well with their customers, right? So we always knew that the accountants are are the gateway to success with with the the, the business owner, right? Now the way that we kind of go about doing that is creating an environment of of really um, of caring with our partners and really showing up to make sure that we're positioning in them in the best way possible to adopt technology. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that technology is forever changing and constantly moving, but I think that one of the things we have to always keep in mind is how you work with your technology partners. And it's why we really refer to our, our accounting firms that we work with directly as partners, right? The, the word partner is really ingrained in our DNA. Um, and it, it forms partnerships in that we we know that a firm's success is really um, indicative of where our success ends up being. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to be out there and working with practitioners. I think the other big thing is that you know we as as being a software provider really understand what change management looks like. Right, yeah. we deal with it day to day. We understand what it takes for folks to adopt technology. We understand what it takes for their teams to adopt technology. And we know that's different for, for each different person in the firm. Mm -hmm. um, and the only way to really kind of dig into that is really show up and spend time with firms and understand where their where their their pain points are and really kind of dig into those and try and solution for those. 
So we take a really proactive approach. Um, I used to I used to call um, I used to call it the zero love, right? So <laughs> we love our partners, um, and we really we put we put um, the best foot forward and really trying to show up as as often as we can. Yeah, it shows. It's definitely. I'm. I like I said. I'm experiencing it, and so I can speak firsthand now uh, to how you truly spend time with your partners and are very thoughtful about how ways that we can together, you know, combined enable firms um, to make the shift, to make the change. Uh, and it's exciting times because we're hearing it in the news that things are changing. We've been talking that this is coming, and it's it's here. We're seeing. Um, a lot of venture backed, you know, firms now and how they're using technology. And so, you know, combined, I feel like that we can enable firms to make that shift. Um, and, and along those lines, you know, again, I feel like we've been talking for years about, you know, why firms should move to the cloud, why firms should be using cloud based tools. Um, but I love, I know you're passionate about that. So I'd love for you to you know, discuss that is like how many firms are not in the cloud yet or why aren't why have, haven't they moved to the cloud yet so i'd love to pick your brain on that your perspective on that yeah so you know early days when i was out traveling around talking at various events or talking with firms you know there was always there was an initial like aversion to the cloud like what is the cloud you know where is it i can't see it it's floating around me um, and there's all these like, like buzzy, different buzzy word. yeah 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 like i don't quite know where this cloud thing is like i see clouds <laughs> by my house but that's not quite exactly what you're talking about right so yeah um, but so there was confusion around it and what i kind of like to boil it down to is you know we use the cloud and we use cloud computing day in day out right like i moved into a new home my new home doesn't have keys right there's a yeah, cool. there's there's an app that I used to enter and leave my home, right? Um, but so there, there's a natural there's a natural adoption that's happening where technology is just becoming more and more a part of our lives. Now, when you correlate that to technology with accounting, you have to think about what what the end customer experience really looks like and how do practitioners really work with those end customers, right? And that's what's propagated the, the need for cloud accounting within firms. The other part of that is that, you know, without having solutions that can work together and in, in good symbiosis, symbiotic relationships, you'll never get to the point where you can really deliver services in a manner that is efficient enough to mm -hmm. really provide services that are value added for the customer. You know, none of us that got into the accounting world ever got into accounting to do some data entry like that's not that's not what we started out doing it's not what we went to school for you know and, and i think that you know thinking about and correlating back to the core values of what somebody actually came to the industry to 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 really to right. do that's what really will start connecting people to being able to leverage the cloud and leverage technology like zero and like botkeeper and like other providers that are out there where they can start working with they can start working with the end result of the data that right. needs to go through the accounting system versus like the beginning piece right and i think that that transition is what's going to allow firms to start servicing their clients in a much better way yeah because when you really look at it you know i did a lot of tax work when i was in practice and there was never as much the fun part yeah doing mm -hmm. the tax return and understanding it and conceptually understanding you know what tax impacts really look like you know that that can get kind of exciting um but really honing in on you know what the deliverable was to the customer and why they came in the door to help to get our services it wasn't necessarily about that it was right. about some sort of need that they had and they were getting serviced now if we could have done it in a more efficient manner um, which I'm not sure that we could have, we were pretty efficient at what we were doing, but if we could have done it in a more efficient manner, that would have left more time to have a better conversation with the customer yeah. about what the real result looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, I'm, I've been thinking about this a lot because I think it's been a really, really tough year and a half for CPA firms. I mean, last year with the pandemic, extremely stressful, 
making the shift to work from home, having your children be, you know, schooling from home, having the PPP, we're then all of a sudden trying to help firms around the payroll data and how do we keep these businesses alive or how do we get them some money coupled with tax season last year and now tax season this year. I mean, people are fried They're at, at firms and, um, you know, there's more businesses than bookkeepers. And if bookkeepers are, are fried <laughs> and they're quitting, you know, firms are at capacity. And they're, I, I heard today actually that some research that 80% of CPA firms are saying no to new business at least once a month. And so there's a need here, right? And firms are at capacity. <laughs> firms, staff are burned out. And so what better time than now to really think through a strategy of how you can help your clients and how you can also help your staff. Happy staff make happy clients, right? And so how can you put that strategy in place for using technology um, like Botkeeper and Zero in a new way? So it's an exciting time. It's an important time. Um, and so, you know, I'd love for you to, to share kind of what you're seeing happening now too uh, around that. Yeah, so the last 15 or 16 months has certainly been um, a time that we never would have predicted. There's mm -hmm. also, there, there's never been a, a further proof point as to a need to be ready for right. a situation like that, right? Um, you know, it, it's interesting because if you were, if you're at capacity today and you're turning away business, then, you know, it, you've got to find another way to open up the floodgates, right? Otherwise, you're stuck with where you are. You're not going to grow. You're not going to expand. You're not going to have the time to step back and actually work on the business. You're just working in the business, right? Yeah. And I think some of the challenges that um, that it's really easy to to kind of kick the can down the road and say, oh yeah, well once I get a little bit more time, I want to learn more about that. Well, there's no right. time like the present, right? There, you know, there's no time like getting in it and doing it now. And, you know, if you're turning away business, that means that, well, number one, maybe you don't want that business because it's just not a good fit for you. Um, but if you're reluctantly turning away business, you're not going to necessarily end up where, where your ultimate goal could be. And, and again, like thinking about what kind of work you want to do day in, day out. This is another good time to get to reset what that looks like. So, yes. you know, if you want to have conversations with customers about, well, where is this receipt that I can go enter versus, well, this is the yes. impact of that receipt. Right. And here's the decisions you should be making based upon those receipts. And this is what I'm seeing. That's a way different conversation. And it's I think right now. Conversation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think, you know. When you look back at, you know, let's say about 12, 13 years ago in 2008, 2009, um, when we saw some big downturns in the in the economic environment that we're sitting in, and you think about what was possible to do back then, and how many businesses could have been saved with mm. just having good information, mm. and you fast forward to now, where we've got the technology to do it, right? What businesses are we saving right now? In yeah. what business is going to make it out of this this pandemic, and then what businesses are going to accelerate because of that? Mm -hmm. And I think you know, as a practitioner, we've got to have responsibility for how we actually service our clients. Mm -hmm. We cannot be running after things and chasing down work that's not necessarily going to move our customers' lives and their businesses ahead. Yeah, and I Maybe. think when when you correlate that to to staff. If you're not building an environment in your practice that that is supporting what is next coming technology wise, you're going to see people starting to leave because yeah. there are a lot of firms out there that are doing that. And it's interesting. We, we really have never had an employment challenge or a lack of employment in in the accounting industry. Right. We've always got more jobs than we have people to fill them. Well, that's an indicative problem of the kind of work that we're doing. And I don't know that everybody starts looking introspectively at the work that they do and the workflows that they're putting our teams through and whether or not that's really creating um, 
a good solid um, high employee net promoter score because you know that's not just something that is that that's something that can impact the firm just as much as as um, as as any other business. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's where I think. Obviously, I'm at Botkeeper, so I really believe that the AI and the machine learning is is the next step, right? Obviously, making the shift to the cloud, where you know a lot of the firms still have clients not even on a GL, <laughs> but getting them on a GL and getting them on a cloud GL, so that you have the data and you can use the data. Data is power, and firms have all this data, but they haven't really looked at ways they can use it to analyze it and to think strategically and so you know not only getting the client on the cloud but then the, what's next i believe is the ai and machine learning and being able and like botkeeper only works with cloud-based gls our bots can only scrub your data at zero right um, and be able to code those transactions um, but also now we have uh, we sit on such on top of so much data that we can look at trends Right, and our whole goal is to think through how can we bubble up those trends to the firms to really use this in a meaningful way. Because to your point, businesses are struggling with this. If firms are struggling with this, businesses are struggling with this. And who better than the person they trust the most than their CPA um, to start having those types of, uh, of conversations? So I'd love to hear your take on sort of you know what is next with the machine learning and. And, and the artificial intelligence and the RPA and all of that. Yeah, so it, it's a real um, it's a real thing, right? It's really impacting how businesses think about um, where where their their information is going. And I think where where we're going to start seeing firms and um, firms across the board really going heavier into is they've got to start looking at some of that data that you just talked about in a meaningful way for their customers. If they can't start looking at that information in a actual meaningful way and spending the time to do the analytics around right. what that actually means for their customers, then they're kind of spinning their wheels a bit, right? They're spending their time in, in areas that are not necessarily value driving for the end customer. And that's what it comes down to. Like they're, as a practitioner, your customers are coming to you for your advice and for your expertise. They're not coming to you to tell you for you to tell them, well, this receipt belongs in office expenses versus right. somewhere else, right? That's not what it's about. And I think the more that you think about, the more firms start thinking about niching into specific industries yeah. or even it doesn't necessarily have to be an industry, but maybe a size of customer or a geography. And they start thinking about what those kind of what the impact is around data that supports those those areas. They right. can start building their own data sets to help right. support the customers, right? So one of the things that I did relatively early on when I was starting to kind of set up our, our cloud accounting or our CAS team was I really wanted to focus on specific industries. So mm -hmm. early days, when we first started doing some of the stuff, I didn't know what I was doing, right? Like mm -hmm. I was I was running at things and technology, I would always run at whatever the newest technology was because that's what I loved. But we were also servicing customers across a broader a broader swath of different industries. And that's because we learned by learning with our customers. And we started with our existing clients and, and we had relationships there and we knew we could test there. We knew we'd get honest feedback from them on the services we were delivering to them. But then as you start thinking about, once you start creating that bandwidth, now you can start setting uh -huh. what your trajectory kind of looks like, right? You start picking areas that you have passion behind and you want, really want to work with. Um, now it may just be the profitable sector and that's totally fine, but like, you know, I had a passion for working with um, with outsourced IT folks, right? That's mm -hmm. there was an area I liked working with. Um, probably would have gone into that business had I not gone into accounting and had parents that were in that business and got dragged into it, um, mm -hmm. kicking and screaming, mind you. But <laughs> I started building I started building analytics around what those what those customers needed, 
So as I started getting deeper and deeper into that segment of the business, I didn't have any time to look at the down and dirty data entry stuff. Like that's yep. just not something I had time for. And it would have pulled me away from looking at the data sets that I needed to look at, at to the point where we had enough of those types of clients. I had, the, I had conversations with those customers that if I only had one of them, I never would have had a value-added conversation with them. But instead, I was able to come right. in higher prices because I was I knew the segment that I was working in and I knew it really, really well. Um, and it actually That's allows powerful. you to be more flexible. That's really powerful. Um, and, and I agree, like with Botkeeper, you know, where our machines are, it's very simplistic what we do. We code transactions. Our bots do that, right? And our bots can do that in nanoseconds accurately, right? And simple. Whereas we free up the firm to do the harder stuff, the stuff that you just described, right? The complex things um, that clients value and really need your help with and really need to talk to you about. Right? And so we free up firms um, and the bots, you know, they don't get sick. <laughs> they don't miss work. You don't have to worry about that. That's the easy stuff that's just automated and done. Freeing up the firm, right, to do what you just described to go really deep, to really understand their customer and understand the vertical that they're working on and looking at trends and coaching and advising and helping these businesses go to the next level. Uh, and to me, that's the exciting thing about working at a technology company like we do, right? This is where, you know, especially in our partnership, right, we can think through how we can enable together firms to do, um, I, I think what they come into the business practice to do. Right. That's where that that's the draw is to talk with your small businesses to help your small businesses grow. Uh, and so, you know, I think that the way we can come to the profession with these this type of thinking is is they're ready for it. Um, I think they're trying to move towards it. They're still not sure how. And, you know, that's where these partnerships are so important is there's people at our companies that know how or have you've done it. You're coaching your teams on how to help firms do it. And the more that they allow us to truly be their partner and under, help us understand their goals and how we can help them get there, that's the role, the, the power um, in, in that helping firms with this change. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think the point of efficiency within a practice and thinking about where efficiency matters the most, that's what's important here, right? So let the technology do all the heavy lifting. Let the technology do the hard work, like the the easy the stuff, the simple, time-consuming, manual things, though, right? Yeah, get out, get out of your own way, so that you know when you when you have those moments of brilliance where you think about a, a client after they've already come or gone, right? And you think about the opportunity to really be able to actually help that person. Yeah, like a lot of times we really don't take enough time away from those manual processes to really just be able to look at what we've got in front of us and spend that analytical time or even spend the, the time with the client to actually kind of work through some of those challenges. Agreed. Well, and, and further along the lines of what you're talking about, how you had in your practice, you were building out that vertical focus where you were passionate about with those outsourced technology companies. Um, that's what I've really learned about Zero. Uh, that I think is is brilliant is your kind of strategy on having being a great amazing GL, but then you allow the firms to add on best of breed, and so you've got this really and I can say a botkeeper we've experienced this. Your API is very easy to work with. You have this really easy uh, API to integrate with, um, and I've learned that you have like a thousand apps right in your can you speak to that because it's really the way you are building thinking about that and you know helping firms build that with that open api i like i like the strategy so i'd love for you to share yeah in our most uh, in our most recent earning report um we did announce that we we, we hit that thousand app um threshold and i basically i mean you really laid it out perfectly right the without like we know what we're good at and we'll stay within our lane to be really, really good at that and we continue to improve what we're good at, right? The challenge is that there's people that can build other things that interact with the accounting system. Right. And are better at that. 
right? Like, and they want to be, if there's, if people want to be experts in those fields, like we're here and ha happy to help them. We also know that that creates, that creates a really easy migration path for folks to come to us. And, you know, I think one of the, when I think back to when I originally started to adopt um, cloud technology when I was in practice, one of the things that we started with was payroll. It was just, it, it, we, we had a necessity around it. It was, in the, it was in the GL, much to the chagrin of some of my um, original account managers. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't the GL. We started with payroll and it was back in 2009. We, we came to zero in about 2012, 2013. Like, so it was a couple of years later. And one of the reasons why we came to, to it is we, we wanted versatility in how we were working. Well, we, we still had brick and mortar locations. We still went into the office every day. We just wanted to have the ability to be able to flex with what the customer needs were at that time. And we weren't as prescriptive around what those solutions were going to be. We learned how to do that later on. And I would encourage everybody to be nice and prescriptive about how they approach your customer interactions. Um, but one of the things that really started to open my eyes and when I had this aha moment um, as to where, where we were definitely going down this path. One of those things was the fact that when you started having APIs in applications that used APIs to connect to each other and they're all sitting in the cloud, these, these connections actually work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you didn't have to worry about some add-on or plug-in that was sitting on some server somewhere and wasn't running. And, you know, and then, Got a host of stories about backups that weren't running or yeah. something like that, where servers got re-imaged and all of a sudden you lose a tremendous amount of time. These things work. And mm -hmm. I think that was one of the things that really opened up my eyes and said, well, no, we can go do this because these applications actually talk appropriately to each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, thinking about ecosystem partners, effectively what, what I always like to tell what I always told my clients when we were in practice was that I like to think of about I like to think about it as a mini ERP system that you could totally customize and pick the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And yes, the GL sits in the middle and Botkeeper sitting there as as an actual tool to help support the reconciliations is really important. But then, what's the POS look like? Mm -hmm. What does the payroll service look like? What is you know? whatever else you're plugging in, right? What does inventory look like? Like all those pieces start becoming a larger accounting ecosystem and all of them are important. What I always did with, with clients was that I was really um, specific about what technology I gave them access to. Uh -huh. So thinking about change management, there's change management at every turn, every level with staff, with clients, like there's right. all this management. So you give them, you give the customers, you give your clients an app that is easiest to interact with first. So they mm -hmm. start adopting some of that change management mm -hmm. or that technology. Mm -hmm. Your team's oh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Your teams may be working in in all the other apps, but right. give them the simple stuff first and then they can start adopting. That's a smart strategy. I think you know, the firms that are focusing on verticals are building a specific tech stack to that vertical and they've created process around because they vetted out the right tools for that vertical and then their talent understands the process of how to use those. And, you know, clients don't know how to do that. They don't, they don't, they don't have the best processes. They don't have the best tech stack. They don't have the people that knows how to integrate them and implement them. And so these are all things that clients can come to firms for and firms are like, oh, we know how to do this and with us you get the best in breed and with us you get our talent and our processes so i'm watching the time um we've got two more minutes <laughs> uh and so Della, i just wanted to see if there's any questions or if anybody would like to ask a question with the remainder of our time there are currently no questions in the queue but feel free to add one all right well while we wait dave can you let everybody know how they can reach you um, yeah, absolutely. So you can reach out on LinkedIn um, and that'll get me a message right away. And or um, you can also email me. Um, my email address is david.emmerman at zero.com. And for all the firms that haven't looked at zero, I encourage you to. 
um, because it truly really is a, a unique experience. And if you are considering moving some clients to the cloud, changes change, right? And so why not look at all of your op opportunities in cloud-based GLs? Um, thank you so much, Dave. I've enjoyed our time together. I appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate being here.